dear students welcome to another day's lectures in um, machine design uh, to, we were solving some problems yesterday we solved some problems today uh, we will continue to solve some more problems now you see this problem design a shaft to transmit power from an electric motor to a lathe headstock through pulley by means of belt drive the pulley weight is 200 newtons you see here pulley's weight also is given that means you know this pulley here it is uh, having weight of its own w also in the previous uh, problem we did not consider w only we considered uh, that belt tensions t1 and t2 now w also is involved so our total weight will be w plus t1 plus t2 like that it will be okay 200 newtons and is located at 300 mm from the center of the bearing from the center of the bearing the center of this uh, flywheel or pulley whatever you see is 300 millimeters okay the diameter of the pulley is 200. This diameter capital D is 200 or this one is 200 mm. And the maximum power transmitted is 1 kilowatt. This, this is maximum power. Maximum power. Okay. See maximum power. We Where, where do we use? Uh, maximum power we use uh, uh, in in the torsion equation and uh, uh, in the in the power equation we use mean uh, torque oh that was mean uh, torque sorry this is the maximum power anyway the maximum power power p p you can take as one kilowatt and 1200 rpm this is capital n and the angle of lap is 180 degrees you see the angle of lap means the belt is coming here and here from the point touching here to the point touching here how much how many degrees it is doing okay this is the angle of uh, lap of the belt and the coefficient of friction between the belt and the pulley you see this is the belt uh, this is a belt going like this and between the belt and this pulley belt is you know it can be uh, leather belt, belt or some other belt and uh, between the belt and this pulley which is normally made of cast iron or something so there is uh, friction coefficient of friction so that coefficient of friction is 0 0.3 0 0.3 the shock and fatigue factors for bending and twisting see the, this is a sharp, you know for bending and twisting means this is km and kt these are given okay yesterday we were uh, seeing about the about these factors shock and fatigue factors for bending and twisting okay for different uh, types of loading we were seeing the values so here in the problem it is given see so the allowable shear stress in the shaft only shear stress is given here uh, 35 mpa they didn't give tensile stress so that means what just with torque equivalent you can finish this problem you know in this problem they have not given sigma t sigma t also if it is given then you have to consider a bending uh, equivalent uh, bending moment also and uh, another diameter you'll, you'll get two diameters you'll get one for equivalent torque another for the equivalent uh, um, bending moment and uh, whichever is the larger of those two values will be our final diameter okay anyway so these are uh, this is the data that is given now now the power equation is p is equal to 2 pi nt upon 60 so otherwise t can be written like this from this you see p is 1 kilowatt 1 kilowatt means 1000 watts okay see here you should always put in watts okay because you watt have watt is what newton meter per second so from that you know meter comes here okay so 1000 into 60 by 2 pi n. n is 120. See 120 given here. So we substitute and we'll get this much. And we should not keep it in Newton meters because all our problems will be solving uh, mm as the base. Mm everything converted to mm, so you'll, there won't be confusion. So much of um, so many um, so many, what what, is, um, what this is the torque transmitted. So many Newton millimeters. Okay now next let us see 
Now T1 T2 are the belt tensions right side and the slack side. We have uh, you know formula two formula I said la last time. Okay, uh, wherever belt belts are coming, two torques are there. One is T torque T is equal to T1 minus T2 into R. This is one formula. Another formula is T1 by T2 is e to the power mu theta. Otherwise, it can be like this also. Okay, in logs also you can give, but don't worry about that. You know, your calculation, uh, your calculator can calculate e to the power something also. So, that way you can find out. No need of logs. Okay, see, you substitute here. First formula is T is equal to T1 minus T2 into R. Now, T, you know, you have already calculated from the power equation. And T1 and T2, you see, um, now we don't know T1 and T2. R we know. R is d by 2. Okay, that is 200 by 2, that is 100. So, from this, you will get an equation T1 minus T2 is this much, 796 newtons. Another formula, T1 upon T2 is mu theta. Mu is given as 0.3 and uh, theta is 180. You should put in radians. Radians means pi. Pi is 3 into 3.14. Like that you should put. So, you will get this value. And so, in the calculator, you calculate. So, T1 upon T2, finally, you will get to get it 2.57 this value okay you were taking anti logs logs you know you need not to worry about all that okay if you are good at calculating all this you do it otherwise not e to the power mu theta directly you can find out t1 upon t2 is e to the power mu theta e to the power mu theta you see first what you do see this theta should be in radians radians means pi pi means uh, 3.14 okay 3.14 into 0.3 you calculate and put it find e to the power of x or something in x you put this value this value mm -hmm. this value then you will directly get 2.57 you put calculate and see in your calculator otherwise no for the first time if you do in the exam you will not know what you are doing and it will go wrong okay so anyway you have now two equations of more than two unknowns t1 t2 t1 t2 these are two equations two unknowns so from that you can find out t1 and t2 now tight side tension and slack side tension so now what is the total weight that is uh, acting on the pulley see in this diagram they have put T1 plus T2 plus W. Okay. This is the total weight here. Okay. So, so the, now total weight is T1 plus T2 plus W. This tight side tension, slack side uh, tension and the weight of the pulley. Totally 2010 uh, newtons is, uh, is uh, acting at the pulley down. So, now bending moment. Bending moment. This is a cantilever. Can you see? This is a cantilever. Cantilever means what? Uh, see, it is supported on one end. Other end is free and here the load is acting. Okay. It is like a cantilever. So, now uh, for cantilever, uh, the bending moment is um, load into distance. Wt into L. Wt, total load, you should consider all the three values. Okay. For 2010 into 3. 100, 300 is the, uh, uh, the distance here. T300 is this, 300 mm. Okay. And then, now, you will get bending moment so much. 603 into 10 to the power 3 Newton millimeter. Now, you see, our equivalent torque uh, formula is, this is square root of m square plus t square. But when you have to consider km and kt also, km into m whole square plus kt plus, uh, plus t whole square this will be square root and okay you should you should understand this square will be applicable for km also this square will be applicable for kt also you see if you simply put km uh, m square and this outside then the form it will be uh, it will give you wrong answer okay so from this you find out you see uh, this is uh, 1.5 and this is 2 Okay, you substitute these values, you will get 918 into 10 to the power 
3 newton meter okay once you know torque equivalent torque equivalent is pi by 16 torque e cube okay in this formula you put from here you will find out diameter diameter is coming to 51.1 and 51.1 will not be available so round it to 55 you may say i will up, i will round it to 52 or uh, 54 something like that okay in the exam you do it but in an actual practice they go to the standard tables and they will see which of the diameters will be will they will see which of the uh, diameters will be available in, this, in, the, in the, the market. Accordingly, they will select the diameter. But at, it should not be less than 51.1. Otherwise, it will fail. Okay, that is the meaning. Okay. Okay, now uh, let us... Uh, till, till now, what, what all design we were doing is uh, design of the shaft uh, on the basis of strength. Okay, now let us do uh, the design on the basis of rigidity criteria. Rigidity. So, this problem, you know, is on the basis of rigidity. The steel spindle transmits 4 kilowatts at 800 RPM. This is P and this is N. The angular deflection should not exceed 0 0.25 degrees. This is the theta that we use okay but it is in degrees you have to convert it into radians because in that formula it will take radians per meter of the spindle okay uh, okay uh, so now the radians we have to convert it into uh, degrees we have to convert it into radians how to convert it into radians you see uh, 180 degrees is pi radians so you have to use this pi by 180 this uh, multiplication so 0 0.25 into pi by 180 pi is 3.14 so you will get so many radians you have converted it okay the modulus of rigidity for the material of the spindle is 84 gpa gpa means what gpa means gigapascals <laughs> okay gigapascals okay you see how how gigapascals you know are one minute i'll show you uh, here you see deca means 10 to the power 1 hecta means 10 to the power 2 kilo is 10 to the power 3 mega is 10 to the power 6 giga is 10 to the power 9 it is capital g it is used you see small k is kilo okay and then tera, terabyte you say, gigabyte, megabyte, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte, you know, in terms of computer memory we know, okay. So, similarly, it can be kilograms, megagrams, gigagrams, mega newtons, giga newtons, like the tera, then 10 to the power 15, pico, peta, peta, then 10 to the power 18, exact, nobody uses all these things, you know, we won't go, maybe at the maximum we come is, you know, maybe 10 giga okay in the mechanical engineering but you know then exa then zeta then yotta <laughs> 10 to the power 24 okay if you go to come to the other side if you come to the other side what is this yeah if you come to the other side you see 10 to the power minus 1 is deci decimeter centimeter like that you know we have milli 10 to the power minus micro micro is this mu is used okay 10 to the power minus 6 okay actually why we are not we are using capital m here because small m is used for milli okay then nano nano is 10 to the power minus 9 then uh, pico is 10 to the power minus 12 uh, femto is 10 to the power minus 15 atto is 10 to the power minus 18 zepto is 10 to the power minus 21 and yopto is 10 to the power minus 24 so that's what when we say gigapascals there means 10 to the power 9 you see it is used here 10 to the power 9 newton per millimeter square okay then uh, okay now we have power equation uh, power is 4 kilowatts isn't it 4 kilowatts means 4 and 4000 watts 4000 in this if you put the you'll get this now we have uh, the torsion equation um, T upon J is G theta upon L. 
this we find from this you know j j is the polar moment of inertia can be taken like this so j we know pi by 32 to the power 4 and theta uh, torque we got this here and it newton millimeter this is newton meter this is newton millimeter newton millimeter should be there into l is a thousand l is thousand uh, is it given anywhere Ah, 1000 see angular deflection should not be 20 0.25 degree per meter per meter means 1000 okay so 1000 upon g g is 10 84 into 10 to the power uh, 10 to the power 3 you see 10 to the power 9 newton meter square pascals is newton per meter square gigapascals uh, we we want it megapascals. Megapascals means 10 to the power 3 it will become. Okay. Megapascal and newton per millimeter square is same. 1 megapascal is 1 newton per millimeter square. Okay. So that you substitute. And theta is uh, this radians that you substitute here. And you will get this. Uh, you will get d to the power 4. And that can be converted into D. D is we are getting 33.87. So that means 35. Okay. And then what else is, is asking? Find the diameter we found out. And the shear stress induced in the spindle. Now what is the shear stress induced? For shear stress we have this formula. T is equal to pi by 16 tau D cube. This is the shear stress. Tau is D cube you know, shear stress. So T we know. D we know. We have to just find out tau. Tau is um you know you are getting 5.67 newton per millimeter square okay uh, 5.67 megapascals this is very small torque you know anyway here uh, if if they have given this is the strength strength you know no what are, what are the orders we were seeing we were seeing some 47 50 60 70 like that those values we were seeing so those sizes now this is 5.67 this is very less stress so this there is no problem this will be uh, design is safe you can conclude here design is okay okay because this stress is much less than the permissible stress anyway permissible stress is not given if it is given you know it normally the stress will be permissible stress permissible shear stress will be around uh, uh, 50 60 that order okay this is only five this is very less so design is okay you can see also, okay, this is one way uh, we can design. Okay, now let us see another um, problem. Here what they are doing is compare the weight, strength and stiffness of hollow shaft of the same external diameter. Diameter DO is same. You see, in, the, in case of uh, so, uh, hollow shaft, DO is same. And in case of solid shaft, D, D and DO are same. Okay. As that of the solid shafts. Inside diameter of the hollow shaft being half the external diameter, that means di is half of do, do by 2. That means both shafts have the same material, are of have the same material and the same length. Okay, what is given? Do is d. This is what is given. Then di is equal to do upon 2. This also is given. That means what k, this ratio is d i upon do is equal to 1 upon 2 is equal to 0 0.5 k value we know okay now let us first compare and see in three things they are asking first compare in the weight then in strength and then in stiffness first let us come to weight comparison of weight now weight you know what is the formula weight is uh, the volume into density volume is what is the formula cross sectional area into length is the volume okay so cross sectional area into length into density this will be the thing first let us consider for hollow hollow the cross section is pi by 4 um, bracket uh, do square minus di square okay length is same density is same so you can just uh, say l and rho you can use or just keep it like that and for solid shaft weight will be cross sectional area is uh, pi by 4 d square length is l density is uh, rho okay so now compare compare means one upon the other so uh, wh upon ws wh upon ws means this upon this see length length will get cut density density will cut 
So the pi by 4, pi by 4 will cut. What will be remaining is do square minus di square upon t square. So this do do also you can take it out like this 1 minus di square upon do square. Now we have th this can be simply di upon do whole square. Otherwise it is 1 minus square square. This is 1 minus 0 0.5. 5, 0.5 from here we are taking okay so 0 0.75 so that means what we can say the hollow shaft is 75 percent of the solid shaft that means if hollow shaft if the solid shaft is 100 kgs hollow shaft will be only 75 kg that is the meaning now let us come to the comparison second comparison second comparison is strength see strength means what the torque bearing capacity torque torque transmitting capacity that is what torque transmitting capacity torque is equal to pi by 16 d pi by 16 tau d cube that is the formula see for five for solid shaft pi by 16 tau d cube only but hollow shaft torque uh, uh, th means what uh, torque transmitting capacity for hollow shaft that is pi by 16 tau z, z d0 cube into 1 minus k to the power 4 so now comparison comparison means what one upon the other like this th upon ts that is what we want so hollow shaft upon solid shaft see hollow shaft this and upon this means you know pi by 16 pi by 16 will get cut tau tau will be, uh, get cut what will be remaining is d0 cube and into 1 minus k to the power 4 upon d cube so now d and d0 are same so we can uh, put this as d0 so what will happen this this will get cut only this term will be remaining 1 minus k to the power 4 okay so that comes to 0 0.9375 you see that means what though uh, the hollow shaft uh, is 25 kg uh, lighter compared to the solid shaft you know i am assuming that solid shaft is 100 kg then the hollow shaft is only 75 kg but uh, it is able to transmit not 75% of the strength of the solid shaft, but 93.75% of the solid shaft's uh, torque it is able to transmit. You see, that means, you no know, inside uh, material we sacrificed, but, you know, 25% of the inside material we sacrificed, but, you know, torque bearing capacity only 6.25% uh, we, we, it got reduced. So, it, so the, this is good it is better to have a hollow shaft okay now let us come to stiffness now stiffness is gj by l i told you some time back okay what is the stiffness gj by l gj by l is uh, from the torque equation uh, t by theta okay so uh, stiffness let us call s of the hollow shaft is it for the first the solid shaft solid shaft is g j by l j is pi by 32 d to the power 4 l now here also uh, for a hollow shaft pi by 32 d 0 to the power 4 minus di to the power 4 so see now comparison means one upon the other you are comparing s h upon ss so all these things will get cut g by l g by l will get cut pi by 32 pi by 32 will get cut only this will be remaining so d again we can replace as d0 so what will be remaining is 1 minus d i upon d 0 4 to the power 4 so that means 1 upon k to the power 4 this is coming to again again it is coming to 0.9375 the stiffness also uh, is as much as uh, you know is only reduced by 6% or something whereas weight is reduced by 25% uh, so that is the advantage with the hollow shafts see shafts can be you know of different uh, uh, shapes like this See, plane transmission shaft is like this. See, here, uh, this rectangle that shows is a keyway. Uh, that means, you know, here is the place where you can put a uh, pulley with the key. Okay, that is plane transmission. Stepped shafts will be like this. Normally, so in the center, there will be more diameter. Towards the ends, lesser diameter. So, here, you know, you, you can see the keyways. That means, here are the pulleys mounted. Here and here. here. And this another step is provided for the bearings. Like that. See, machine tool spindle may be like this. You see, uh, for different uh, diameters. And the railway rotating axle. This axle, 
uh, axle means you know no torque comes on it only the bending moment comes on it say railway you see though for our eyes no it may be appearing like straight uh, uh, line but you know th there will be some little taper like this and then this non rotating truck axle uh, will be like this crankshafts are like this see here I see here one connecting rod will be connected the another connecting rod another connected. so see this is you know four cylinder for four cylinder engine uh, this crankshaft can be used you see these are the different ways you know this this is the the, the you know you see in all of these shafts you know there are steps uh, available what are steps for steps uh, you know you can locate you, you can you will know where exactly the pulley comes where the bearing comes you see suppose if everything is uniform cross section you see if we have to bring some pulley what will happen from here to center suppose you have to bring if it is of one this thing then what happens is all the, you know it, it sometimes it can be you know it, it will be uh, uh, exact fit you know uh, if it is press fit or something then from here to here you know you have to be slowly hitting 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 the pulley and bringing so the pulley will serve you know the inside diameter of the hub you know it may damage the surface of the shaft you see and we saw in uh, uh, fatigue loading you see cracks for in fatigue loading start because of the uh, because of the surface damages because of the cracks that are present on the surface from there you know the cracks may propagate inside and you know the shafts or axles may break so therefore it is better not to surface the damage it should be like a mirror finish okay so surface damage should be avoided so if it is a lesser diameter it can be easily brought here and put here and assembled with the key and the bearing also can be inserted see our you know hitting with the hammer and surfacing the damage should be avoided so for locating also and for uh, you know not damaging the uh, surface at the time of uh, the assembly of the pulleys and the bearings this step shafts are useful okay with this uh, to for today we will stop here uh, see most of the things uh, about the shaft we have seen shaft uh, we will finish here and uh, tomorrow we will see about uh, the keys and afterwards couplings thank you